All right, back here at my first top bar hive in Saber Canyon. That's, uh, I had to wait for the day to get a little cooler to open it up because you don't want to open a top bar hive when it's hot. It's best to do it in the evening so they got a chance to repair the combs after you've been through them. It's a good thing I'm wearing a bee suit right now. I haven't checked on them in a while so they don't recognize me. Let's get this off here. It's just a spare frame. Alright. I want to see how much honey they're storing. And I also want to see how the queen's doing. The last time I looked at them, the, I had reasons for concern. There was uh, not a whole lot of brood. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll start this up again when I get into the honey. Fortunately, the wind's picked up. All right, the wind has decided to pick up as soon as I got the hive open. But anyway, this looks like the first frame. It's got honey in it. It's like about a third of the way full. That's on uh, frame number whatever. <laughs> All right, they got plenty of honey. I've gone through at least uh, six or seven frames that were just full of capped honey. But this is the first instance I've seen where there's actually brood right here. So that's more than they had last time. So that's probably the indication things are going well. Unfortunately, I broke a little bit of comb there. So they're trying to put combs together. So I'm gonna get in there and fix that. Uh, I guess you'll get to see that. Alright, fortunately this is one of the frames I've got with the uh, frame around it. Or bars I've got with the frame around it. So I shouldn't have any trouble just pulling it out of there. Alright, that's got brood. Looks actually, it's actually very good. Nice. Yeah, I don't think I have to worry about them. They must have just uh, slowed down uh, brood production because of a honey flow or something. Okay. Let me set this up. It's one thing I like about having the frame around it is I can maneuver it and set it up like this. Very nice. Anyway, they built a little bit of comb in here. Which uh, they really shouldn't have. Let's see if I can pull it out. Ooh, ooh. Let me see what I'm doing. All right. Yeah, just a little bit of honey. Nice little snack for me. I wonder why they tried to build in the middle of the frames like that. Oh well. Ah. Oops, dropped it. I it looks like there was some wax on the bottom of the hive and they tried to extend it upwards. best thing to do here is just to push it down with my finger to mess up the honeycomb pattern so they don't try to extend it anymore. Then it'll wind up just being a lump of wax kind of on the bottom. This also squeezes all the honey out so the bees can get to it. Alright. And it makes it flatter so I can slide the frames around without hitting it. Alright. I think I think that's all I'm going to do today. I've seen that they've got more brood and I don't have to worry about them. It's got a good queen still. 
Now I just gotta put these frames back in. Alright, I, I put the frames back in. And uh, I think I mentioned earlier... Oh, wind. Alright, I think I mentioned earlier that I should have named, numbered the bars. Because, you know, I, I don't know what bars are what number. But uh, I'll show you what I've been doing to know which frame goes where. See how the bees put these little bits of uh, propolis? All I gotta do is line up the break that I broke when I took it apart. And that way I know this frame went there. So I can keep them in the same order. Alright. <laughs> One thing I don't like about wearing a veil is I can't just stick things right in my mouth. <laughs> but I got me a little snack for later. It looks like these bees have got enough honey that basically anything more that they put in, I can, I'm going to be able to harvest. Might even be tempted to take a couple bars out anyway. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All I wanted to do here. Um, I think I was saying earlier that it's best to uh, check on top bar hives in the afternoon, right when the sun's going down, because. Uh, you break combs and you uh, sever the connections on the sides and it makes it weaker and you want the bees to be able to have the night to be able to fix it because otherwise if you like did it in the morning then by the time it got hot the bees wouldn't have had time to fix the connections and you could end up with a collapse of the combs <clears throat> this hive's been pretty good I think it's the tin roof uh, the hive over in Salt Lake City uh, the combs collapsed anyway, and I think it was just because of the, the brown colored roof was getting too much heat. Alright, well, the wind's picking up. I'm gonna have to quit for the night. I might, I might look at some of my other hives, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna film anything. All right, so they just come from that hive, and uh, I'm thinking that would be a short episode, so I'm going to talk about something while I'm uh, walking back. You can see here, these uh, flowers are gumweed. Makes some very good honey. And uh, this, this type of flower usually grows where the ground's been disturbed, like see here right next to the road. It's a good uh, midsummer honey producing flower. And there's usually enough of it that I can uh, collect some honey from it. And uh, I'd like to enter it into the fair sometime if they if I can figure out when the entry dates are. Anyway, a few years ago, you know, I'd see large fields of gumweed or uh, sunflowers sometimes we have lots of sunflowers you see there's there's a few here you know some years we got a whole bunch and but most years we got very little oh, sorry about the wind I'll try to talk over it anyway the uh, <clears throat> I'd go walk through a field of flowers and I would see no bees or very few bees <clears throat> You know, initially I thought that uh, they were being lazy or they didn't want to go to the flowers. But they were still bringing in pollen, they were still bringing in honey. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And then I decided to sit down and do the math and figure out why I would see so few bees on the flower. The reason is, is because the, the area that the bees go to uh, honeybees will fly up about two miles from the hive and they, they do that quite regularly so you've got a circle with a radius of two miles like see I got the hive sitting over there you got a radius of two miles from the hive let the bees go that covers basically everything you can see here plus some on the other sides of the hills that you can't see 
Now at any given time you might have less than 10,000 bees out foraging. <clears throat> now there is a bee buzzing me right here, but he's attracted to the honey that's on my hands. Well, I should say she. Anyway, 10,000 bees spread over a circle with a radius of two, two miles. Let's uh, figure out how much that is. Uh, with pi r squared, the area of that circle is going to be, let's see, pi 3, that would be 6 point, I don't know, 4. So that's about 12 square miles for one hive that the bees go to. 12 square miles, now about 640 acres per mile, per square mile. That is, I just round that to 600. It's about 720, 7,200. So that's about 8,000 acres that a hive of bees will cover. Now you got 10,000 bees covering 8,000 square acres. You walk through a field of flowers, the chances of you seeing a bee are actually quite small. Now if you got more hives in the area, then of course, for every extra hive, you're going to have another another couple of bees per acre. And so, in areas with lots of bees, you're going to see lots of uh, lots of bees. <clears throat> also, in areas where the bees are concentrated, like a tree that's got a bunch of flowers on it. Spring. What car that came off of? Anyway. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, well, out here where I know how many hives I've got, I can kind of calculate that I would only see, given that uh, an even spread of flowers, maybe five or ten bees per acre. <clears throat> I hope that was interesting. I'm almost home now.